The Nigeria High Commission in London, United Kingdom, has been shut down for 10 days as two officials tested positive for COVID-19. One of the officers had gone to the UK Home Office for a meeting on Thursday where a test revealed his status. This prompted the testing of all the mission staff, resulting in another positive case. In line with COVID-19 regulations and the need to adhere to the rules and regulations of the host country, the Nigerian mission said it will close down for the next 10 days in order to observe the mandatory isolation for those who were in contact with the affected officials. In the meantime, reaction continues to trail the purported manhandling of the Nigerian diplomats in Indonesia by some members of the country's security agency. We are now being joined for a broader perspective on all these by Ambassador Joe Keshi, a former Nigeria Consular General in Atlanta, the United States. We want to say very welcome to you, sir. And let's start it off from the issue concerning our embassy in the UK being closed down. Paint a picture for us. How inconvenient would it be for Nigerians in the diaspora, especially in the UK? Well, look, this is the reality of our time. And I think every Nigerian in the diaspora knows this very well, that um, uh, in any organization, once somebody is tested or suspected to, to have the, 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 the COVID, no matter the variant, uh, almost uh, the whole organization would have to be shut down in order to protect everybody that works in that organization. And what has happened in the Nigeria High Commission in London is, is no exception. They just follow the UK routes, and it's for the best interest of everybody, including the Nigerians, in the diaspora in the United Kingdom. Okay, I mean, we may not be able to change that, but just out of interest to get your, your own opinion on it, um, could some not say that this is like, um, using a sledgehammer to crack a nut in that the virus is already out in the community. So if you shut down every institution just because you find one or two cases of COVID-19, where would we be? Well, look, this is, this is not, this is, uh, th this is a normal today. It's not just the High Commission. This is a normal today. This is the reality. And uh, I think everybody would have to, you know, learn to live with that. I can tell you for free, um, I'm among one of those who, my, my passport, for example, has been in the uh, South African embassy here in Nigeria for almost two months because they've not been working. Soon after we made application for a new visa, they just shut down the embassy and it's been like that for the past two months. So 10 days of isolation for all everybody and that allows officers themselves to go tested for you know, for, uh, for COVID, it, it's the right thing to do. And I think anybody who, who complains should, should uh, you know, should, should make a difference or should decide, do you want to have COVID or do you want to have the services of the embassy? I'm sure that they will vote to have the services uh, of the embassy in, in, in a healthy environment rather than leaving the embassy and being sick. And it would be worse if somebody gets sick or somebody comes around and says, I caught the COVID from the Nigerian High Commission. It would be worse, you know, if that should uh, happen. Ambassador Joe Keshi, um, I would like to still pry for, though, because we are not blaming the High Commission for what has happened or for them closing, because it's better to be safe than sorry. Uh, but we're just and trying... I, and, I, and I'm not saying that. Okay. I'm not saying you're blaming them. I'm not saying you're blaming them. I'm just saying this is the normal that the whole world is living with. No, agreed. It's just unfortunate, also, but uh, what do we do? Agreed. So now, move in a, in a bit to press it further, but still trying to dwell a little bit on this. What are the alternatives for Nigerians abroad? Do we just fold our arms and wait till the embassy or the High Commission in London actually opens? Or do you think this is, where, this is the appropriate time to begin to take several of these steps and the need for a physical structure digital? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, if you talk of digital, yes, I think, uh, you know, I believe that the, the mission itself has been on this for, for quite some time, and a number of our missions, I believe, you know, uh, have, been, uh, have been doing this. Um, I, I guess, look, moving forward into the future, this is uh, the, the route to go, and I have no doubt in, in my mind that with time, uh, you know, this would... Uh, 
eventually be accomplished. Okay. Um, now let's turn to the attention, um, turn to face the issue of the Indonesian diplomat. Um, who was at fault? Having read some of what transpired, the, accus the allegation from the Indonesian side is that the diplomat struck first. What's your understanding? When you, when you read the, the full details of uh, the Indonesian side of the story and how long it took them, you know, to get such a story out, you don't have to be told that they are, they are not being truthful. They are not telling the whole truth. But the fact still remains that um, when you look at the video itself, you begin to wonder whether just for arresting if somebody who did not have his... Um, a resident permit or diplomatic ID card at that time, whether that was an, uh, enough, a justifiable reason to treat the gentleman the way they've treated the, uh, the diplomat. But here's something you need to know about the Indonesians. They've always treated Africans and Nigerians horribly. It is not the first time. We are all hearing about this. The world is getting to know about this because it involves a diplomat. Many Nigerians and Africans have gone through that same uh, treatment in Indonesia. And I remember sometime when I was in service, a Nigerian delegation, powerful delegation, had actually gone to Indonesia to, to you know, not just to plead for those that were arrested for drugs and that were said to be executed, but to also plead for better treatment of Nigerians in that country. They, I've, uh, the Indonesians have never, you know, yielded or actually considered respectfully the request that we've always made from this country. So it's not the first time. It's just because a diplomat is involved in this current uh, crisis. All right, Ambassador Keshi, some, an international lawyer was once quoted saying that because probably some of these um, countries know that Nigeria is slow to react to major issues like this. We begin to see more of these things happen time and time again. South Africa, Ghana, and then this latest that has come from Indonesia. We've seen countries literally trample on our citizens and no backlash whatsoever. I don't think it's a question of being slow, too slow, I mean, uh, being um, uh, too slow to act. There, there are so many things involved in a crisis uh, situation, you know. Number one, um, uh, oftentimes diplomats and the Minister of Foreign Affairs anywhere in the world do not react based on the you know, stories you hear in the newspapers. They have to wait and hear from the people on the ground. And I'm sure that uh, by the time the ministry called the first press conference and then summoned the Indonesian ambassador uh, to the ministry here, it was because they have heard from the ambassador on the ground. So it takes quite some time for these things, you know, uh, to, you know to, uh, to happen. But I think uh, in this case, uh, the Nigerian government, in fact, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, they've, they've done the basic and they've taken appropriate uh, decisions and actions necessary to deal with the you know, with the, with the crisis itself. And it has, again, it has nothing so much to do with whether the country is weak or the country is not uh, weak. No, I don't think that is true. But you must also realize that for you to be able to respond effectively, for you to be able to react to this kind of situation, there are certain things that your country must have the power to do. And in some circumstances, a number of African countries, and indeed Nigeria, doesn't have that kind of wherewithal to be able to deal with this uh, kind of situation. So what do you do? You deal with it, you deal with it in, a farm, in, a, in a more diplomatic manner as is being done today. Okay, let me find out from you as, um, as regards another, do you say, weights that might be pulling us back when it comes to diplomatic relations abroad. Um, how easy <coughs> is it to represent Nigerians' diplomatic rights and interests when what you are dealing with ostensibly is a prejudice or a bias against Nigerians because of the reputation we've developed abroad as maybe a nation that isn't doing too well? No, 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 no. no. I, I don't think anybody deals with Nigerians as a nation that is not doing too well. Let, look, you know... Uh, I, I get this Sorry, let me interject and time. ask, no, what would you say then is, how, is behind the Indonesian bias or prejudice against Nigerians? 
You know, it, 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 it's very simple. And when I was in service and I travel around the world and meet Nigerians, and when I started this, uh, get involved with this, uh, you know, uh, trying to mobilize Nigerians uh, to be involved in the Nigerian diplomatic process, one thing I always say to Nigerians is that, look, any country you live in, for goodness sake, try and live by the roots of that country. In some countries, like in uh, Indonesia and Thailand, they, 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 the roots are very clear. They, they, the punishment for drug trafficking, for example, which is what most of our people are involved in, is death. There's no, there's no pleading. Once it's drug, be sure that the punishment is death. So what people complain about in some of these countries is that if you violate the roots of the country, they are, they are obligated, you know, to implement their own rules. So we have an obligation. I mean, Nigerians that live outside this country, they, they have... They, Please go on. They, they, <clears throat> they, they, they have an obligation to obey the rules so that they can live, you know, peacefully, in a peaceful coexistence with nationals of the country where they, you know, where they, where they, where, I mean, where they reside. So you think it's solely to do with the fact that the citizens are not law-abiding, not because of any pre-existing bias against us? Look, one, one common trend in this, in this current story, one common trend in this current story, I think it's just the beginning of the story itself, that the Indonesians had gone to, you know, I wanted to read, uh, uh, you know, um, an event, which they thought will involve foreigners. And probably it was there. Maybe the Nigerian diplomat was invited or something like that. I don't know. But it just happens that um, at the time they wanted to read, or at the time they were carrying out this operation, the Nigerian diplomat could possibly have been there. And this is what, uh, what happens. So in effect, I'm saying they already had, an, uh, they already had the knowledge that there were some illegal elements somewhere. And then... They were blacks anyway. Right. And then the only black man they saw when they got there, or at that point, it's a Nigerian diplomat. Of course, they didn't know at that time that uh, he was a diplomat, or they didn't give him enough opportunity All to right. explain himself. I want to say many thanks to you, oh, Ambassador so Joe Keshi, for your time here on Newsday. Thank you so much for shedding light on, the, on this particular issue.